Okay, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make an injection mold. Um, just like the one you see here, I'll basically teach you how to make this exact thing from start to finish. I'll first start with the, it'll be a two part video because it's very detailed, so they're quite long. The first one will be quite long because I'm going to teach you how to do the, the cores and cavities, both the A side and the B side. I'll begin by showing you how to adjust your shrink in your part and how to compensate for that. And then how to actually make your A side and your B side plates as well as an insert like this one to actually mold your part. And that's what I'll show you in this video. Now the first part of the part one of this video will be long. So um, remember it's long because there's a lot of detail in it. And if you want to make something like this, you really need to know the details. So unfortunately it's it's an hour long. I apologize for that, but that's pretty much, I made it as short as I could to teach you how to do it. So I'll get started in showing you how to do that. So here we go. Show you how to, to add shrink to a part and so basically I showed you how to design the part um, so you have to start at least in in solid edge uh, on a blank slate so you create a part so we'll create a new metric part and it comes in like that and you notice I'm in synchronous which is fine you can create it in that but you could do ordered as well, it doesn't matter. But anyway, if you go to the home page, there's a little icon right there. It's called part copy. And so if you click that, it comes up and allows you, you it asks you to bring in a part. Well the original part is called I call it Dolph T three two five or three two five zero. So we'll open that part. And then it comes up this little menu here and really nice and neat is the ability to scale your part and uh, and so I was going to do this as a high density polyethylene um, um, material so the shrink on that is, is typically up to 2% or 2.5% so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scale this guy up and they, they actually have a shrink factor you can just put it in there so I'll put in 0 0.025 and then I'll scale it evenly in all directions and I'll apply that and that's it so now if you go in here to there oh, <clears throat> so if we look at this guy I'll finish here so now it's finished and before we do that uh, as you can see there's a little, little question here on the part it created a part copy it has a little thing that's it, some of the it, it, it wants to be optimized and so I always do that you don't have to do that but I always make sure it's right so I'll optimize the whole part this goes through all the surfaces and it because it's scaled it, it some of the surfaces aren't quite up to snuff and so this optimizes everything so now you can see it's all really good so that part is now scaled up ready to be inserted into the mold for doing their mold design. So that's how you do a, a, a scaling for a plastic part. It's that easy. And that's what I'll use to create the mold. So next I'll, we'll start the actual mold. Okay, we're gonna actually design the mold now. Um, before you start, you need to know your, your uh, restrictions or your confinements of your molder. But on a big molding machine, you're restricted by your press size. Typically, there's four uh, big old long round uh, what call them, bars, or they call them across the machine. Anyway, so you're restricted with what you can put your mold size in, and this is no different. And in, in this case, on um, my little molder, I designed this little guy here, and on the uh, the the newer one, or the the more advanced one, which is called Krager. That one you can actually put in a little bigger mold um, and, and run at much higher pressures. But on this little guy, Lu2, you're, you're restricted to a mold size. Is a, basically, well, you can actually put a bigger one in, but you got to remember that the, the center of the this dimension here 
from the center of your barrel to the bottom of your, your uh, little guy here is two inches. And so, so that's what you got to keep in mind where your material goes in. You just be aware of that. So I'm going to design this mold T for a little mold of mold size of four inches square. And we're going to try to do two parts is what we plan. So we're going to pull that off. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I, I like to always start because now we're going to work in an assembly environment. And again, it's an all CAD systems. It's the same. I prefer, of course, solid edge, but I'll show you how to do that. So we'll, we'll basically go new and create a, a new assembly. It's a metric assembly. And I know I probably confuse you because I work in metric, <laughs> but anyway, I just prefer that. And then we're gonna first start our assembly, but we're gonna bring in the part we're gonna mold. And what I like to do is bring in the part because it locks it to the to the origin, so everything will be referenced from that part itself, and then we'll go from there to build our mold. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna pull in our T. I'm going to go to where I store all my stuff, which I always create the project directory, and then I store projects in there. And uh, let's see, where is it? Um, here it is, my golf tee. Here's my golf tee project. And then I want to bring in the part that I scaled, and I just drag it in. And there it is. You'll notice it's 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 reference to its origin where it was created from, which is fine. And then I'll, there's the part. And you have to be careful where your parting line is. You have to plan for your parting line. And this one, because we're going to open the molds this way, our parting line is right down the center. All right. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just name our file so we save it. So we're going to save, save as, I'll put it into the same directory. Under our golf team, we'll call it the T mold. T mold three two five zero. So basically, we have an assembly, and in that assembly, we have one part. And now I will go in, and I'll actually create a part within the assembly. All right. And they'll ask me. Give it a reasonable name here, and we'll call it the uh, T mold, and we'll do the we'll do the A side first. That's the side that goes on the the heater side. All right. So now we're basically in the part environment. I'll switch to ordered. And now we'll grab we'll create our mold. So I'll, I'll grab a reference. Now I'm basically at the exact center of the part. And then I will I will basically put the part in the center of of the uh, T so we have lots of so I'll just get close for now <clears throat> now I don't quite know where the center is so I'll put some reference points in there so I can know where it is so I'll reference there and then I will make that a construction line uh, and then I know there's the tip down here so I'll, I'll grab a line and stick in it oops Put a line in here. There's lots of different ways. I'm sure you can be done this way. I ain't gonna do it. And I'll make that a construction line also. So it's notice they're, they're dashed, and so that are construction lines. So now I know at the center, I can just grab it right here. It's right there is my center line. And I'll make that a construction line also. And then I'll trim off this, these other ones. So I know that that is the center of the part. 
and then I'll I'll lock a dimension on there so it won't move. All right, <clears throat> and it's also locked to the center because it's attached to there. And then I'll put a reference so it, it stays our material. You'll see it move when I do that. <clears throat> and also this one, I'll put another reference. And so it's centered exactly within that P. And now I can add dimensions to this. And so I want that to be four inches, so I'll put four inches. And I want it to be square, so I'll use another lock and make them the same. So that one dimension holds everything. Now you'll notice that I actually have only one T, so really I need two. Um, so, because I want to do two, right? So let's go in, and I also notice that our T um, is is a little when I am I thinking about this when I'm molding it because I'm on this side of the T I'm actually gonna need a uh, insert because it's a so if I if I put a view where I can look inside you can see there's a I gotta have this material removed when I mold it. So that means I need a piece of, of, of steel or aluminum, whatever I want to use in there to create that. So this part can come out of the mold. Because this is our manual mold, right? If it was full automatic, this would actually be done with a slide. Um, so what I need to do now is I need more room so I can't make my mold like I wanted at four inches square, I gotta make it longer. So I'm gonna undo my last command and I'm gonna change this to something reasonable. So I'm going to make this dimension, um, watch I didn't even do that, but let's make it, let's make it six inches, which is the max. Now I got plenty of room, and now let's make this guy four inches. So there's our mold, and I can easily fit two in there. So I'll just move this one over, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish that. This is a code they call protrusion, right? So this is this side of the mold. We'll call this. Let's call this side the A side. So we'll go this and let's make it our uh, molding thing, our, our thickness. Let's try for, uh, let's just do, I think we can get away with three quarters of an inch, so 0.75 inches. Okay, so there is that guy right there. So we've got half our mold. And then we don't like these round corners, so let's go ahead and get these corners fixed up. So we look decent. Something. I'll speed through my video. I'll hopefully, this stuff will slow in there. There you go. You can always press edit though, that might be a little bit aggressive for them. Let's go to 12 on There we go. All right now, I want to, because we're going to hand load this, we want to get ourselves uh, scratched. So we'll put a little chamfer in there. Let's, look at the, let's go forward on this. So. There we go. So there is our mold. Or half of it. We'll call that our A side. It's going to be the side with the logo on it. Alright. <clears throat> now, let's go ahead and since we know that the other side will be identical, what we do is um, 
We'll save this. And then we can also save as again and just save a copy. But this time we'll call it the B side. We'll save that. All right. And we'll close out of that part environment. <laughs> and then we'll go and add our B side in. So there's our so created a copy. And then we'll use our mates and uh, we'll put that glue together. All right, so that baby is a mold together. We'll escape out of there. So we have a mold. Now, one thing to help us is is uh, is our view. So I, I like to be able to see what I'm doing in there. So what I'll do is I'll go in and edit these parts. Um, you can actually do it in the assembly environment. I always do it in the part environment, and I will. I will color them, but I'll make them clear. So I'll make one side a black clear. Oh. And then we'll make the other side. Come on. We'll make him a red. Make it a red color, I think. And you can do faces and different features when you do this kind of stuff, but we're just doing all the body. Alright. So that will help us see what we're doing. So now there's our part hidden in there. Now there's going to be what's nice because we scaled this, uh, just to show you how easy it is. Um, but first, what we need is a uh, we need a part in here to create this this relief here. And so before we do anything, we really need to get that done. Um, I'm trying to think the best the best way to do that is to actually create another part. Um, this is pretty cool. So we'll create another part. Uh, let's go create part. And we will call this insert. And we'll call it T3250. Insert. I would call it mold insert. What that spell guys? Insert the C. I think it's the C. I don't know. I'm a terrible speller. Okay, here we go. So now we have this part. And uh, before, well, we'll go ahead and do this, but I, I, for, I forgot we, I'm, I want to do two T's. So before I do that, I'm just going to create the part because I'll, I'll have to change it. But I'll put one here just to give you an idea of what's going on. So we're going to go and add a revolve. And we're going to include our, our top there and we want the very top. There it is. We'll include that feature. And then we need some reasonable amount of material. Um, so let's come out about this far. 
Oh, that's pretty dimensionless, baby. Let's do 15 millimeters. Oops. Likes to move. There we go. And then we're going to make this guy just a little bit bigger. Let's make him 16. And let's try it out. See if we can get our mirror to work. Nice to do this easy. There we go. And now let's try our mirror. Yeah. Okay. So now we have a way to adjust it, right? And we really don't want our, our insert to have this hump in it but it'll help us right now get our design done. So, so I think what we'll do is move them apart a little more. I think that's just a little too close. Um, so let's do that. Let's adjust that. And let's move it. Let's go 18. Oops. We gotta make sure we don't adjust our dimensions here at all. We'll lock these, especially these ones. This one we can manipulate, and this one, but these have to stay the same. So now let's let's try. Let's see what twenty looks like. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I believe our mirror should work now. There should be a void between the two, you know, which is better for us. Yeah, yeah, I think that's much better. All right, we can do that with two inserts like that, but that means we have to make two of them. So let's fix that now. We will just go ahead and add some material on there and even though they're two separate pieces we're still that is actually one part so let's go ahead and add some material there to bond them together again that's why they call it order and even in synchronous environments it's still sort of an order kind of build structure kind of thing and i'm including what i did here is an include so i'm going to include features of the part and so i want to and actually i i just want because I do want radiuses on the ends to make it easy to get in. And then I want to go right on the centers of these guys. And then I'll square them up. Let's trim off the excess here. So we got that. And we're gonna go and split it. Come on. There it is. There we go. So we now have our insert for those. Now, because this is going to be a removable piece in our mold, it, it, it acts you very hard to put in this mold because we need all these seams to be really tight so that our mold won't flash. And but we yet yeah, we need to get it in there. And then on this particular face here, we don't want so we right now so now we need to put our parts in so make sure we don't screw things up so we know that let's i can't remember now let's let's turn let's turn the b side off all right so we're on this side here's our a side right and then uh let's go and edit our part or we can actually do a, a check a dimension here so we're going to go from this center here to here. 
and that is 40, right? <laughs> so that means we need to move our T 20 this way. All right. And then we need to go in there and grab a, from our, our T or part library and grab another T. And we need to get him in there, right? So we can actually use some of our features to grab that guy and get him in there. There actually is a small flat on the end, so we can seal it off some there. Right there. And we want to lock him against the face there. And another thing we need to do is we need to get our orientation right so that we're in the same orientation or other one. Uh, let's see. So that means we need these looks like to me we need these guys to line up, right? And that guy to that guy. Oops. We don't want him to be we just want him to be referenced, right? So what we got to do is do it again. This is a command to go back into the assembly area with the little mates and stuff. And we need to do this. We need to go plane, but we need to float it. We don't want it to move. So we need that plane here to be in line with that plane. Is that right? Oops. It's for, this guy wants to move because he's not locked anything. We don't want him to move at all, so let's lock him down. I'm gonna lock him down so he won't move. Let's see, let's do this again. So we want this plane, we want to float. Come on. I want that plane. But we need to flip them. There you go. Now the parts are exactly the same orientation and they're exactly 20 millimeters apart. So that is that. Now, what we have here is I want to actually, so we want to remove this material on, on, on this A side plate to allow our or insert to fit in there but in doing so well basically what I want to do is is add draft onto that part so it's easy to get in to that but I only want a certain part of it to to have draft so I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do that. So now if we turn these T's off, you'll see, oops. I'm gonna turn the A's that off. Let's turn it back on. And get that T off. There you go. So there is our insert, right? Um boom, boom, boom. If I, it's easy to draft, but the problem is if I draft it here, it'll put draft where I need it to be flat in that area. So I'm trying to think the best way to do that. I think what I'll do is I'll add, I'll put a T in, let's try this. I'll add a T in there. I'm going to edit this part. Well, there's actually guides that have, I think it's called Master Cam and stuff like that. They're probably more suited for actually doing mold designs, but anyway, this is all I know right there. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to include some material for now. So I'm going to go into my part here. I'm going to grab that edge. All right. And then I'm going to grab.
grab this guy too. And then I'm going to add some more material in there. Let's see, do I want to do it? Yeah, yeah. I just want to do it here a little bit, I think. Let's see if this works. Let's do it somewhere in about there. And we'll pull it out there. Let's try that. All right, now let's do our yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab the wrong point. So let's grab the pipe. So we need this guy, which is in the center of the part, right? And then we need that point and that point. And I believe, let's try to be pretty aggressive that one. Oops, we split. Let's do four, we got four and four. There we go. Now, that's what we're looking for. We want that guy like that. I like it. So now we can get that part in easy. Yeah. That will be our part. I'm trying to think. That's all right too. Let's let's raise him up so that we can be Yeah. So now that insert. You know, another thing is you want it to be easy to get in and out. I don't think the best way to get that guy. Another thing I notice is that's not going to give us a lot of material to to shut off on and we'll see why i'm going to do a <coughs> of subtraction um let me show you what i mean so so this part here so we'll do a cool little feature here so we're going to do an inner part copy so we're going to copy this part within that part and then grab that whole body so we'll grab that whole body, all right, finish, and then we're going to go into here, and we're going to do a subtraction. So we're going to subtract this guy from that guy, all right, and now you can see it created our feature, of course we have to do some cleanup there, so now I'll close that and we'll turn this part off and you can see how it creates the features, the exact details of the part in that, in that insert to make our part. So that's how simple it is to create that feature. But what I'm concerned about when I was bringing in is, is see this. So I, I've got to get rid of this, which is easy to do, so I'll show you, so I'll edit it. And then we'll cut. And there's a flat down in here that we have to get to. That guy right there. And then we want to grab that circle. And we want it literally. We want him. And if I did that, it would get everything. So we got to put another circle around it so we only get that piece. So, 
So we want everything outside that too. Come on. Trying to zoom out here. Oh yeah. Let's see if we can get all of that. It's in there. Yeah, it is in there. Why is it in there? Get all of it. There we go. Let's see if we got it all. So now if we go in there, there it is. See, there's our shutoff for, right there's a shutoff for our teeth. But you can see there's no, there's very little material here for, to create a seal right there or metal so that it won't flash. I mean, if it was perfect, it would be all right. But in my machine, I'm not that good. So I want as much steel as I can. So what I want to do is I need to extend that out farther so that I get more steel that I can shut off like this. I want more like right here. Shut that baby off. And there also see that little knit line there that shouldn't be there. Maybe. I don't want the draft on that either. So anyway, so I gotta fix that right there. Let's see what oh, this video is a really slow stage down. So <coughs> excuse me. So anyway, that's what I gotta fix. You can see where we're going, right? And just to show you here how the rest of it will go. So let's close up that one. All right, we'll pull in our T here. We'll go and do the same thing with this. We'll edit this part. We'll do the same thing. We'll go in here and make a part copy. We'll grab a whole part of body. Finish. All right. And then we'll do another subtraction. We're going to subtract this guy. And that guy. Finish. All right. Now, as you can see, I'll now close out of there. I'll hide our key. And as you can see in the mold is now that part of it. All right. And we will just do the identical thing on the on the B side. This is the A side all the time. And as you can see, there's room in there for material to flow in there, right? And then we'll go in and make our, because it'll be in the center of our parts, where we'll do our sprue to inject our material in. I don't know exactly, probably, probably tie in the, the sprue right up into here someplace, which is the thickest part of the part. I think it be the best for maybe the center, I don't know. I'm not an expert on that, but um, typically you're supposed to put it in the thickest part of the part. So I think we'll try it there. And then we'll have to add in here some some venting so it doesn't get clogged with air when it injects the material. But anyway, I think you get the picture so far. But first we have to fix this guy here. So that means we have to move him back. We can't have a so we'll go in and do that, redo our part there. But anyway, it gives you an idea where we're going. So we'll go back from, to there. So let's go back and we'll turn all our other stuff off here. Oops, want that guy in there. Let's turn this guy off so it doesn't confuse us. And so we just got this guy. You can do it another way. You can actually leave all this stuff on just to show you another way to do this. Um, and, we, and this is the part we want to play with. You can actually go in and just open it by itself, which is a really nice thing. 
Oops. Cancel, I gotta save anything first. So we will go and just open this up by itself. And let's fix this guy here. So first we go into our protrusion then. It's locked down, but what we need to do is this face. We need to step in it. Like that. Yeah, right there. So what I need to do is I need to I need to actually see a part. So let's go back into it. And let's turn on now. Here's our problem right there. So what we gotta do is include that guy right there. And let's get rid of this. So I get I had tangent on. I'll show you why that happened. I don't want all this in there. And solid edge, when you do include this command right here, it basically includes features of parts underneath or anything really that's buried underneath. We can be a sketch. But I have it selected as tangent line, so it's going to select any tangent line on there. And I only want that little bit there, so I really wanted to select. Just a single one. Anyway, just apply. Now I want this guy to go to back guy. There we go. Now that is exactly on our part. Let's see how that works. I'll put to redo my, my, uh, my step here. Look right. Yeah. There we go. Now it's looking exactly like we want. All right. Yeah, it took forever, but anyway, sometimes that's what you got to do. You got to figure out how to do it. This is the first time I've done a T. <laughs> so there you go. So now I have metal that will sit on there that will seal off nice and neat. All right. So let's see if we like all that. So we have we have draft on there. So we're missing a face, right? Because it disappeared. So we got to go in here and fix our draft. So sometimes you make modifications that loses a feature, and so you got to. Oh, let's do faces. We want to try to do a chain. So we'll do that face. That chain. Oh, come on, what's the problem? Let's do one. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So that'll allow us to easily put our insert in and out and let's go ahead and add some graph or radius on there to make it a little easier maybe. there we go so there is that guy now the way it is it, it it's going to need a little clearance, so we'll put like a thousandth clearance on this. Um, that'll be fine. So what I'll do is this part, I'll do it. When I do this part, I'll do an inner part copy, and then I'll, I'll grow it by a thousandth of an inch. And then we'll do a subtraction that way. It'll give this guy a little clearance when he goes in, because right now it's it would be, if I did a subtraction on this from this from this, it would be like 
We couldn't get it in now. You have to have to heat it up to get it in there. So we'll do a thousand or so to get it in there. All right. So I think that's that. I think the only thing I want to do is is add a way to get it in and out easier. I think we'll I'll just add a bar out since it's part of our mold and that won't be a big deal. So let's go ahead and and uh, now that I've added draft on this, let's go. We can just go before the draft. And go to here. And before that, we can go ahead and add some material on this face. And we'll add a. a round part here so we can grab onto it. So let's make this something reasonable. I suppose it can be even screwed on too the way it can be made. But we'll go ahead and do it this way for now. Let's do it. 18, let's see what we I think that'd be alright. So probably I have it done on this is called a split, so I turn that off. So we want to do it this way, and then something I can grab onto. Here. And then we'll put a nice radius on there. Let's see if I have And now that should allow us to pull it in and out really easy. As a matter of fact, allow us to pull the parts out really easy too, because they'll stick on here pretty good, I think. So anyway, I think I'm liking that. This could be done with a on a separate piece if needed. So it'll probably be easier anyway. Because you could, I don't know, you probably mold that or mold that. Yeah, it should be fine actually. It has to be held in the middle anyway, so that should work all right, I think. All right, well, we'll go here and let's let's go ahead and do a inter, another inner part copy here and get this guy done. We'll do the whole body. And then we'll do another subtraction. There we go. So that insert is complete. I think it's good to go. So anyway, that's I believe that'll work. So now we have our insert done, which will get out of there and just we'll turn off the t's so you can see that so now that feature is in there let's go ahead and since we have it let's go ahead and fix this guy too so we'll do another inner part copy here uh, this guy, I'm going to grab the whole body, finish, and then uh, we'll do a, a subtraction. So there she is. So we'll go out of there. I think on the to do the other side because it's all almost it's really the same process. So if I do on this on the other side, I think I'll just speed through it so I don't bore you with all the repetitiveness. So now I'll turn our T's off so we can see our cavity side. So there we go. So there is our our A side with our insert done. 
and uh, looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and edit this part. And then we're going to do an inner part copy again. And this one's going to be a little different. So we're going to do this guy and we're going to grab the whole body again. Now you want to do this after you do this one because, because we're going to need it. And then we're going to go into a surface in here. And we're going to offset this entire body. All right, and we want to grow them out a thousandth of an inch. That'll give us actually two thousandths overall clearance. I think that'll be good. Point zero one. All right, let's try that. Point inches. And so, so now it actually grew that baby entirely. All right, so now we have an offset. So now. Our part will should fit in there without having to hammer it in there. So now we'll go back to our our subtraction. And we'll go subtract this guy and this guy. Hopefully, I did the the extrude or the grow. Let's see if we get it right. So. So if we take off the inner part copy to now close out of that environment and we'll look and see if we can remove our insert. Let's take this guy out a little bit. <laughs> Turn him off. So now we have an insert. So that's how it's going to work. So I hope that makes sense. And we'll do the identical process on the on the D side. Okay, now we're gonna repeat the same process. We're gonna do our B side. So I basically have our B side. There's our, our A side, I turned it off, but see it's all ready. And so now I will turn off the A side and we'll work on our B side. So we'll go to this guy here and we'll edit him. Okay, in this part of the video, I thought I'd speed things up, but, uh, so I didn't bore you with the same details. So here I'm doing inner part copies of the T's to do a subtraction on the B side plate of, of the T sections. Remember those are uh, the grown T's, so they have shrink added in them. So there I'm doing the, the copies and then I did the subtraction. And now I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the, the insert, the, the gray part there. So what I do is I, I do an inner part copy of it. And then I'll grab the surfaces and I'll grow it by a thousandth of an inch in all directions. So which is an overall of two thousandths of an inch. And then I'll go ahead and again do a subtraction on the plate to the grown part. And that removes the material and then I'll I'll hide it and you'll see it's all all completed okay that concludes part one of the of the video of how to create your cores and cavities on your a side your b side including your insert and in part two of the video I'll teach you how to do this intersection here how to create your your um, your runners and also your gating up in here which I'll teach you how to do that as well as the venting here that's shown up in this area and also I'll show you how, to, how I put in these these uh, locators here to keep your mold located so it registers properly and that will be the last part of the video so that's what you'll see next so hope you enjoy this uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you can uh, see some more videos uh, anyway thanks for watching